Hey, Team HQ Sports. Did everyone survive the weekend? Well, you know, besides the Chiefs, Packers, Niners, and Titans. I'm your host, Lauren Gambino. Can we talk about the Titans for a hot second? Upset after upset in the playoffs. Unexpected yet delightful to watch. But tonight, alas, we are going to put the NFL on hold for a little bit as we focus on one of the greatest sports movies of all time, Major League Trivia tonight. Not the damn song again. Ah, give him the heater, Ricky. Let's do this thing. <laughs> Here's what we're going to do tonight. I'm asking 15 questions all about the movie or movies. Mm. And we'll be stopping for prize rounds after questions 7, 11, and of course our final prize after round 15. If you can make it out of the cellar for the win, the prize tonight is $1,000. Let's call that league minimum, okay? And listen, tanking this game won't get you a trip to Miami. Just putting that out there right now. If you're new around here, you'll notice that you're going to earn points for every question that you answer correctly. You earn more points by picking up a multiplier right now. So go ahead and do that. Points add up to levels, which give you free passes on questions. So it helps you with the ones that you thought you knew or that tragic finger hit the wrong button situation. Trust me, we've all been there. All too familiar with that one. All right, team, we always get a warm-up in before every game of HQ Sports. This one's no different. We normally send you to Twitter, at HQ Sports. You can still go follow us. We do a lot of fun things on Twitter. Um, but today I'm going to ask you questions right here, right now. Let's see how much you know about Major League, all right? Here's the first one. Which of these did the actual Cleveland Indians do? Did they only have cold water in their locker rooms? Did they actually move to Miami? Or did they create a Jobu shrine? What's it going to be? Well, I'll tell you one thing. They're not in Miami. That's a sure, sure answer right there. 50% of you said they only use cold water in their locker rooms. No, actually, that's not true at all. 38% of you came up with the right answer a couple years ago. They created a little Jobu shrine in the locker room. There it is. Didn't, didn't help them win anything, but uh, they still made the shrine nonetheless. All right, we have time for one more. Let's do it. Who improvised most of their lines in the movie? Who was it? Was it Wesley Snipes, Charlie Sheen, or Bob Euchre? Who improvised most of their lines? That's pure talent right there. He has a lot of comedy gold in this movie. All right, Gab? Let's see if you all came up with it. Yes, yeah, 62% of you. That's what I like to see. Bob Euchre came up with some great lines like this one right here. Vaughn into the windup in his first offering. Just a bit outside. He tried the corner and missed. Just a bit outside is right. Uh, all right. That's all the time we have for some pregame questions. Let's get to the real questions, put that movie knowledge to use. I know you got one eye on the college championship game and one eye on your phone. I'll try to make this a quick one for you. Hey, you going somewhere, meet? About 90 feet to round one, let's go. In Major League, what song accompanies Rick Vaughn's walk to the mound? Slow ride, bad to the bone, the wild thing. Uh, Slow Ride was my Guitar Hero song. Gab's too, she says. Um, a fan tells Rick that he made the local news hall of shame for setting the record for wild pitches in an inning, hence the name Wild Thing. Dare, 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 dare. 29,703 of you getting that one right. And did you know that he helped make closing songs a thing for pitchers? And a real Major League Baseball pitcher, Mitch Williams, stole Rick Vaughn's whole thing. Look it up. Charlie Sheen was not happy about it. Round two. What reason does power hitting Pedro Serrano give for his inability to hit curveballs? Witchcraft, lost his glasses, or the cats are afraid. You telling me Jesus Christ can't hit a curveball? Well, the straight ball, I hit very much. Curveball, he says this. Curveball, that's our afraid. That is, of course, until Pedro tells Jobu he doesn't need his help and he'll do it himself. But before that, the bats were just afraid. 12,329 of you got that one. What? Okay, this is a little bit TKO-ish 
for a round two. 12,000 of you. You know, witchcraft is not the same as voodoo, so we're not going to count that. Nope. 12,329 of you are moving on to round number three. Let's do it. For what real-life team does the man who plays Harry Doyle call games? Dodgers, Brewers, or Indians? Well, you don't know this one. No sense in going any farther, right, Gab? Right. Since 1971, the Milwaukee native Bob Euchre has been calling games on the radio for his hometown Brewers with the Brew Crew. Brewers is your answer here. 23,225 of you getting that one right. Glad to see a bunch of you probably had those free passes, extra lives, got back in the game here. This movie was also mainly shot in Milwaukee, so Euchre must have felt right at home, of course. All right, before we move on, don't forget to pick up some extra lives. A TKO question could come out of nowhere, just like round two. Extra lives are great. They're like hats for bats, except they keep you in the game, not just your head warm. And if you die, then I'll just cross you off. Round four. Gab's laughing. What division does Cleveland represent in both Major League and its sequel? AL West, AL East, or AL Central? This one's tricky because Cleveland has been AL Central since 1994 when Major League Two came out. But in the film, they're still in the East, and then they go on to face the White Sox, who are representing the AL West in the ALCS, of course. AL East is your answer for this one. 12,198 of you getting this one right. Is it our first TKO of the night? Gab gave me the nod. Yes, it is. 12,198 of you dodged that. But to over 18,000 of you that we lost on this one, jump back in the game right now. Tap on those hearts. Let's do this. It's round five. Which actor admitted to using performance-enhancing drugs as part of his preparation for the film? Wesley Snipes, Charlie Sheen, or Dennis Haysburg? All right, even if you don't know this one, come on, deep down. You figured it might be this one. He did whatever he thought he had to to be winning. Charlie Sheen says he took steroids for the film, taking his fastball from 79 to a hot 85. Charlie Sheen is the answer. 15,064 of you getting this one right. And actually considering that this was during the time of Canseco, McGuire, I consider this method acting. Round six, let's do it. What title is at stake in the final game of Major League World Series AL Pennant Divisional Title? It's the rare movie that builds to a climax that leaves the winning team several wins short of an actual title. Cleveland ties the Yankees for the AL East crown on the final day, and the last game is a one-game playoff the divisional title oh is it another one gab another tko here at round six boom down and out to over sixteen thousand of you here eight thousand and five of you on the dot got this one right and listen you're in great shape because we're moving on to our first prize question of the night so get back in here if you got booted on that last one i'm gonna ask you a question if you get this one right you have the chance to accept a prize and end the game an early winner or you can choose to decline that prize and move on to the next one round seven where does devious owner rachel phelps actually want to move the team texas california or florida we can all agree it's somewhere warm, right? A little warmer. The premise of the whole film is that Rachel Phelps, who inherited the Indians, wants the team to be so bad they can draw so few people that she could break the lease with Cleveland and move to Miami. Miami, Florida. Because, you know, tons of baseball fans there. Ask the Marlins. Florida is your answer. 15,989 of you getting that one right. I thought so. So I'm going to make you an offer right now. 94 coins. You can choose to accept 94 coins and end your game. Our first winners of the night. Or you can decline that prize and move on to our next prize question or keep moving on to the final prize. It's up to you. 94 coins is my offer. Going once, going twice, sold to 
184 players for our first winners of the night. Congratulations, 94 coins is coming your way. Let's keep this moving with a little game break, though. It's time for our seventh round stretch. We got half of the game behind us, half of the game coming up. So I got a question for you. Should they make a major league four? Woo! Yes, I love this movie. No way. Leave it alone or, hmm, it really depends on the cast. Let's see what you have to say. You know that there were three of them first. That would help. 39% of you say, no way, leave it alone. Mm, I'd say it depends on who's cast. Do you agree, Gab? Yep, Gab agrees. All right, let's move on. Round number eight. Wesley Snipes' character tells manager Lou Brown he runs like who? Ricky Henderson, Bob Hayes, or Willie Mays? Snipes' character was based on a combination of Ricky Henderson and Willie Mays, but when he meets the manager and the coaches, he says this. Say, hey, Willie Mays, Hayes here. Play like Mays, and I run like Hayes. How you doing? And that Hayes is, of course, Bullet Bob Hayes, football player and Olympic sprinter. Bob Hayes is your answer, 5,077 of you nailed it there. You must have got the American Express. Uh-huh. All right. A couple more left before our next prize question. Let's see what you got. Round nine. When Pedro gets a bucket of chicken, it's reminiscent of what real players superstitious practice. Roberto Clemente, Wade Boggs, or Babe Ruth. Frank Purdue, chicken guy, literally called Wade Boggs and told him he'd done more for the chicken industry than anything since science said that chicken was low fat. Wade Boggs called himself a chicketarian and he'd only meet, eat the white meat during the season. 6,027 of you knew that one. Mm -hmm. A bucket of chicken. That'll do it. Is that what you need to win right here? Round 10. In Major League, the Indians roster includes players from all except which of these countries? Japan, Mexico, or Cuba? Pedro Serrano defects from Cuba. Jake Taylor was in the Mexican League in an apartment with a chicken, a la The Hangover. Major League Two sees a Japanese player join, but not the first one. Japan is the answer here. 3,514 of you getting that one right. Ooh, losing over 5,000 of you here at round number 10. I see over 1,000 of you jumping back in the game right now, using your head, tapping that heart and the bottom of your phones because it's our next prize question. So you know what I'm going to do if you were around for the first one, which you must be if you're here now. I'm going to make you another offer if you could get this one right. You could accept it or you could decline it. Here we go, round 11. In one game in Major League, the Indians are shown as the away team at whose stadium? New York Yankees, Chicago White Sox, or the Texas Rangers? The only away games in the film that had actual game action are, so we're told, Milwaukee and Texas. That's because the Cleveland Stadium was nearly identical to those two ballparks, so they could use the same location, yet set it up differently. Texas Rangers is the answer here. Woo! Another TKO at round 11! Is that three tonight, Gab? That is three tonight. 1,680 of you. Shake it off. Don't worry. You got this. So I'm going to offer you 953 coins. Take it or leave it and keep playing for the final prize. The choice is yours. 953 coins going once, going twice. So, yes, 843 players. You're taking home 953 coins. That's a lot of coins. You can get lives, erasers for that. You did good. You're our second winners of the night. Congratulations to our 843 players. For the rest of you, staying in this thing with me. Let's do it. Round 12. The actor who played Clue Haywood primarily played what position in Major League Baseball? Pitcher, first base, or catcher? Good old Pete Vukovic plays 
is the tobacco spin slugger Clue Haywood, a Triple Crown winner. And here's how good of an actor he was. In real life, that guy was a pitcher. He even led the American League in wins while playing with the Brewers in 1981. Pitcher is your answer at round 12. 1,523 of you getting this one right. We only have a few more to go here. $1,000 on the line. The numbers are dwindling down. 2,000 of you are jumping back in the game right here. Round 13. Where did Lou Brown previously manage before getting the Cleveland job? Toledo, Mexico, or Japan? Cleveland's GM goes off the board for their skipper, calling the manager of the Toledo Mud Hens, Lou Brown, who replies to the job offer by saying, Well, I don't know. I got a guy on the other line about some white walls. Can I call you back? Toledo is where he was from. What does that mean? I don't know. 2,829 of you getting that one right. Oh, good old Toledo. Listen, we are two away from ultimate victory here. Let's see what you got. Round 14. What would be the scoring on the final play if Willie Mays Hayes had been thrown out? 4-5-2, 4-3-2, or 6-3-2? about it real quick what happened in that final play I'll tell you the shortstop runs in to field the bun and throws to the first baseman Taylor is safe and I'll let you watch the rest how about that here comes the throw he slides he is safe safe the Indians win it the Indians win it oh my god the Indians win it what a moment. That's a classic 6-3-2 all the way. 6-3-2 is your answer. 1,961. Have you scored it right in the book? Send on your phones right now. And you know what that means. We've come to the final round. Hell of a situation we got here. Two on, two out. Your team down by one in the ninth. You got a chance to be a hero on national television or on your apps. If you don't blow it, that is. By the way, saw your wife last night. Hell of a dancer. You must be uh, very, very proud. Round 15. Which real life team had a longer pennant drought than the Indians at the time Major League was released? White Sox, Cubs, or Red Sox? When Major League hit theaters in 1989, the Red Sox had won the pennant just three years before. Meanwhile, the White Sox had last won in 1959, but the Cubs, known for the longest World Series drought, and their pennant drought dated all the way back to 1945. Cubs is the final answer here. And we have 1,974 new HQ Sports MVPs. Congratulations! winners. I love it. It looks like we're all taking home a prize of about 50 or 51 cents, whatever way the penny fell. Shout out to uh, Keb Gurr, 51 cents is coming your way. Vulcanizer, 51 cents is coming your way. Nice ride. Purpley Yeti, 50 cents is coming your cute way. Cloudy Eye, Saz, Edero of W, it cuts off, sorry. Roost! Oh, a couple of doggies. And is that a, what is that a plate of, Gab? Is that bagels on a plate? Goku, 85. You got some bagels? I couldn't tell if they were potato skins or bagels. Pizza bagels, even better. Thanks, Gab. She's always looking out for the important things in life. Listen, against all odds, you did it. Sliding into that last question like Willie Mays Hayes and beating those damn Yankees, a.k.a. this game. Take that, Miss Phelps. Oh, what a great game, everyone. Hey, I love our Monday movie nights together, but if you are just a regular old sports buff, then come back on Wednesday for our regular game of HQ Sports. All kinds of mixed sports trivia there. I'm Lauren Gambino.
Gab and I need to go figure out how we can do a two-person wave, an effective one that doesn't make us look like we're those, you know, wavy balloon crazy arm people outside of car dealerships. Until next time, remember to hydrate, focus, and keep your head in the game.